We are here today with Sean Dickerson, who is seeking to represent Subdistrict 2 on the District 186 School Board. We appreciate you being here and invite you to start by providing an opening statement that introduces voters to who you are and why you are running for this office. Sure. First of all, thank you very much for having me today. Um, and thank you to those uh, watching online, um, showing interest in, in what I have to say today. Um, as you said, my name is Sean Dickerson. I've been a lifelong resident here of uh, uh, Springfield, Illinois. Um, grew up in on the north end of Springfield um, so I, you know represent that area um, I'm running for school board um, this year I have a nine-year-old son in this in the Springfield school district we started with district 186 when he was three at the early learning center um, and he is now a ball charter as a third grader and we've had uh, incredible experiences um, ever since he was at ELC um, so age three and he's now nine so um, and honestly um, running because I've, uh, I've heard the the old adage that the school district is not a good school district and my wife and I completely disagree with that and uh, this is kind of our way um, of giving back to the community um, volunteering my time and just um, hope, hoping to get the word out there um, that District 186 is an absolute incredible district. Um, anything that I can do to improve on what they're doing, um, I'm willing to do. I'm excited about the, the master plan um, that they have rolled out, and I'm really looking forward to be a part of that. I think it's a huge opportunity for um, the people of Springfield, um, the students, administrators, and everyone involved. So um, that's why I'm running. <clears throat> so this is an open seat by which I mean the incumbent is not seeking um, the seat Correct. what makes you the best candidate out of the two names voters are going to see on the ballot um, I, my passion for one um, I've actually been looking at uh, running for school board for a while I thought it was kind of disappointing that uh, the predecessor um, ran unopposed um, I wish uh, I would have stepped up earlier, to be honest with you, and ran for this seat. Um, there's some integrity issues that, uh, with this seat, um, the incumbent, or not, sorry, not incumbent, but the person that held this seat um, has has done a disservice to the people in Subdistrict 2. Um, we've not been represented um, uh, positively, and I think it's time to have someone um, to bring some integrity back to that seat. And I do believe that I'm the right person for that. Um, I'm just a dad trying to do things to um, improve the district for my son. I do not have a personal agenda. Um, and I'm just hoping to make a positive, uh, you know, positive influence on the community. Okay. What do you see as the primary responsibility um, of a board member for D186? Um, directing policy, creating policy, directing policy, um, being a strong advocate for the district. Um, you know, there, there's overall the district is great. It's phenomenal. There are a few things um, that uh, I'm hoping to change um, when I get in there. Um, I'm only one person, so um, I would need to work with the other board members, obviously, um, to bring some changes. Um, and advocating for teachers. I'm a strong advocate for the teachers. Um, I think they need a strong uh, voice on the board. I work for an elected board for the Springfield Park District. Um, I know what it is like to work for a board. Um, I've had board members that have been uh, very involved. Um, I've had board members that were not involved at all. Um, and overall, having um, board members that um, can advocate for for the agency is one of my number one priorities. If I'm lucky enough to be elected, I would be out there promoting the positives that the district has and um, you know encouraging the public to get more involved with District 186 and see the positives. Um, but most importantly, um, as a member of the school board, um, you got to do everything you can um, to provide safe um, schools for teachers, students, and um, just an overall positive environment for learning. <clears throat> what are some of the changes you'd like to work for? Um, so some of the changes um, that I've <laughs> written down, some, there are a few concerns that I have going into, into this. Um, looking at the numbers, there's a higher absentee rate within District 186 as opposed to the state average. 
um, I want to work with teachers and reaching out to parents to find out why why that is in Springfield, um, why there's a high absentee rate. Um, some of the other things, there's only 62% um, rate of college enrollment um, <coughs> for 186 students. Um, I find that disheartening that only we're, you know, 62% of people go on to college. I want to make sure that they're receiving, um, you know, the, the, what they need to go on to secondary education. Um, maybe provide some more resources on helping um, kids find scholarship opportunities. Um, and maybe some of them, you know, maybe don't even know how to uh, apply to colleges. Maybe, um, you know, working with the, the public um, um, to, for partnerships, for, you know, helping these kids to find out, um, you know, what options are out there for them. Um, and then also um, ninth grade uh, the on track rate is 70 percent um, where the state is 87 percent i think there's obviously some uh, some issues there um, that need to be addressed and again um, working with the teachers i know the teachers are trying very 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 hard um, in the schools that i've been to they are trying um, the best they can and we have some phenomenal teachers in the district we have 1102 teachers and 99% of those teachers um, have actually um, been rated proficient or excellent in evaluations. So I don't think a lot of people realize that in Springfield. Um, and then we also have a 90% retention rate. So 90% of the teachers come back from year to year. So they love their job, they love what they're doing. Um, and I would like to work with some uh, communities, or I'm sorry, some agencies and some people in the community to work with getting parents more involved. I know um, at my son's school, we have a very high um, attendance of parent-teacher conferences, and that's only one, one metric to use on, on parent evaluation, or a parent um, commitment. But getting parents more involved in their kids um, here in Springfield is going to be a challenge and I think getting some community leaders involved to reach out to those parents and get them more involved in the schools like a lot of schools don't have PTOs other schools do um, the schools with PTOs they're bringing in an extra you know twenty five forty thousand dollars a year with fundraisers and uh, I would like to work with the principals that do not have PTOs and and, and see what we can do to to get some you know parent collaboration for these ptos and try to bring in some extra funds and fundraisers to the schools and with that reaching out to the community or uh, businesses in the community to see what they can do for these fundraisers as well how can i'm curious how can the board make that happen because you know if you look at the schools that don't have ptos there are often generally schools with a higher percentage of lower income students so right that and I, parents have the resources <clears throat> I think to that's be where contributing and getting involved sure and and that's a great that is a great point um, one of the schools that I toured has a very high poverty rate and um, a lot of the parents they're not concerned with PTO because they're trying to figure out right where they're going to live put food on the table um, right exactly so I think that's where as a, as a board member a lot of people in the community don't know these issues mm -hmm. so um, we can meet with other schools um, with their PTOs find out what they're doing um, how to um, you know maybe even collaborate with those schools and see if they can um, help us with an advisory board on how to get these parents um, more involved or um, maybe it's not the parents maybe it's uh, community leaders with their um, you know, networking, they can reach out to businesses and say, hey, this school needs some help. What can we do to help fundraise in the community? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. <clears throat> you know, and, that, and that's a great point um, that you brought up is the, the poverty rate. Um, it's very high in Springfield. I believe it's 67 percent um, poverty rate in the schools. I know one of the schools that's in my district is a 97% poverty rate. Um, and I believe more resources need to be um, directed towards those. 
Um, I know one of the schools in my district, um, McLernan Elementary School, um, in the master plan has $58,000 um, allocated for um, security upgrades for the school. After meeting with the principal um, and hearing some stories, I've actually asked uh, Superintendent Gill to look at those, that $58,000, and look at allocating more funds to that school. They have um, homeless issues around the school, um, and I think the entrance to the school could be more secure. And I do not think $58,000 alone is gonna, is gonna solve that problem. Um, you brought up resources. Um, the state has actually started or the goal is to direct more money to schools, yep. especially those in need, with the major overhaul of school funding that was done, put in place by the legislature last year. What's your sense of what that is, what that has meant for District 186? Um, so you're, you're talking about the evidence-based funding I am. from 2017, um, and that took five grant programs, combined it into one. Um, right now, District 186 is only at a 71% adequacy rate. Um, where I looked at some other districts in Illinois and they're at 120%. Um, so I definitely think the system is flawed right now. Um, and I also know that um, it is $7 billion short of lacking um, the 100% um, evidence-based funding for that. Um, I think once uh, the state catches up to that and um, fully fully um, funds that you're looking at a lot of uh, opportunities here for Springfield again um, to get more funds um, um, I'm trying to think here yeah and so before the before the evidence-based funding um, uh, Illinois was ranked 50th um, in the country for K through 12 funding. And now um, with this evidence-based funding, I think you're gonna see that, that change. Yeah, agreed. Um, you, you touched on this a little bit um, in, in your earlier statements, but the perception of the district is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. um, a study by the chamber a couple years ago found negative perception of the district, um, both within and by those moving into the area. So how, how can you work to change that perception of the district so that it's more accurate? Well, I, again, I think it's just advocating for the teachers. Um, like I said, 90% retention rate. I think that's, that's great. Um, they're 99% they're proficient. Um, I just looked here, 53% um, of the teachers in the district have master's degrees or higher. 40, the other 47% have bachelor's degrees. Um, the, the teachers, um, um, they 73% of them have less than 10 absences a year. So the teachers in the district, we have phenomenal teachers in District 186. And again, um, you know, uh, there's 1,102 teachers in Springfield. And a 99% proficiency rate to me is, is pretty phenomenal when you have 1,100 um, teachers. Um, and again, it's just being a strong advocate for the district, going out there, letting people know about the positives um, that the district has. Um, you know, for example, um, and I didn't know about this until I went and visited, McLernan Elementary School has the Mosaic program, for example. Um, and what that is, is it's a um, partnership with the United Way and Memorial Medical. Um, and they provide in school um, uh, clinical psychologists um, that can uh, deal with the student in school settings, bring the teachers in, bring social workers in, and have that in the school setting um, to where parents don't have to go across town to um, to meet appointments. Um, there's the Sangamon CEO program um, that uh, is with the, the Chamber of Commerce and it, it allows kids to get hands-on learning experiences with businesses in Springfield where they create a product, they market it, they, um, you know, this upcoming or next weekend they do like a Shark Tank type thing where they pitch the idea um, to, to business owners. Um, and then there's also something similar at the SIU School of Medicine where kids can learn, learn that as well. So it's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that, uh, 
that people don't know about. So as a board member, you got to get out there. You got to tell, you know, really promote the positive things of the district um, instead of, you know, the negatives kind of, you know, driving the narrative. There's so much positive in the district um, that I think should be driving the narrative instead of the negatives with the um, the master plan coming up with all the renovations and additions to these schools that the 1% property tax um, is going to bring to the district, you're going to see some amazing facilities and some amazing techno uh, technological upgrades to the district. Um, you know, as I went around to some of the schools, you know, the kids have one-on-one -on -one with their own iPads and all the technologies and apps and everything they're learning. It's, it's amazing. I wish that was around when I was a kid, you know. So it's just driving the positives and getting the positives out there that, that people need to be more aware of. And, let you know, really promoting the teachers that, hey, we have great teachers, we have great administrators in the district. So it's just being a strong advocate for all of that, I think, kind of changes the perception of the district. How do you think you can accomplish that? I mean, you said get the, the word out better. How do you do that? Sure. Um, having more um, kind of open forums um, instead of the board meetings once a month. Um, just have some informal things like like we're doing here. Um, you know, you're interviewing me right now and um, and I'm able to, you know, promote the, the positive things. When, uh, when the 1% sales tax was coming out, Mike Zimmers and people were out in front of the public saying, hey, here's all the positive things we're gonna do. Maybe as, as, as administrators and school board members, we need to be out doing that when there's not something on a ballot. Okay. Um, you, you brought up the 1% sales tax, the, mm -hmm. the referendum from November. Uh, did you support that? I did. I voted okay. for it. Yes, okay. and and usually I'm not I'm not for increased taxes, but to me this was really a no brainer. If you looked at what um, what this was going to do um, by looking at the master plan, seeing that you know Lanfear High School, for example, is going to have a complete whole new addition, mm -hmm. um, and and you know I don't think people really understand. Again, this is just getting more information out there. They don't have an auditorium, so they can't put on, you know, musicals or concerts or anything else. If you think about your your experiences in schools, it was always you had stuff in auditoriums. There was guest speakers, motivational speakers coming in. They didn't have that, um, they, so they would have to go to another school to do these things. Um, so it's just seeing all these all these technological technological advances. Um, you know that was going to happen to me the the one percent was was a no-brainer it needed to happen okay. um and again i'm not a strong advocate for raising taxes but you know this is a shared thing um you know it, it's it's good not only for springfield schools but for di uh, county schools as well okay. um Right now, there's a pretty big push for economic development in Sonoma County. Um, they created a new economic development corporation to look at that. Um, what role should the school district play in plans to draw businesses or new businesses and new economic economic development here in town? Sure. Well, I if you have a strong school system, it, it's going to drive economic development and just people moving to Springfield um, with a strong, like I said, um, you know back to the one percent the real uh, realtor association was behind that as well because it's a good selling point when people are looking for homes in springfield what's the first thing a lot of people ask about if they're going to move to springfield with kids how's the school district so obviously the school district is a huge driver for any kind of development in in springfield uh, the the Lincoln uh, the Land of Lincoln Economic Development Corporation is still getting off the ground, but um, what do you think of their progress so far? I honestly have not followed that. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, the board, the school board, would be responsible for passing a budget each year. Um, how will you approach budget discussions as a board member? So working full time for the Springfield Park District, I'm involved in, in making budgets and taking those okay. to the board. So I'm very familiar with how the budget talks work. Um, now being like hands on and in the thick of it all, I think would fall on the administrators and Superintendent Gill. But I think once it's brought to the board, 
um, there should be, you know, look through it line item by line item and, and figure out is this, uh, um, you know, what needs to be done and not so much saying this needs to be done, but asking why are you allocating, you know, 200, 200 in the, in the budget, $207 million. That is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So, um, when you're looking at a hundred and you know ten million dollars for salaries, break that down for me. You know, so making sure that um, as a board member, you understand what you're signing off on, and not just rubber stamping what's brought to you. Work with the administrators and make sure that what is being requested is feasible, and making sure, like I said, for like the McLernan School, you know, I have an opinion. Hey let's look at this um, and see if more money needs to go here type of thing. So not really, you know, telling the superintendent you should do this, but say, hey, why is it that you want this and would it be better spent over here? You know, working with the administrators. Got it. Kind of in that line, there's a school of thought that suggests that board members consider themselves as trustees kind of representing the the interest of the entire district right how's that work out as in Springfield in 186 board members are elected by sub districts and always talk in terms of their schools or the schools in their sub district sure. how did how do you mesh those two right as a school board member you do represent the entire district um, so it would while you are elected um, by sub-districts, you need to realize that you're representing everyone in Springfield. It's a, it's a collaboration. Like for example, you know, the sub-districts, I only have two physical schools in my sub-district, but the residents that live in my sub-district go to, you know, five other schools. Um, so it is a huge, you know, it's kind of like being an alderman. Yeah, you, you represent these people in this area, but at the end of the day, you do represent everyone, um, and you have to go in there with that thought. I mean, you can't just say, okay, I only represent these two schools, and I want all the money for this school. You need to realize that it's the entire the entire thing, kind of like the park board. Again, I go back to my, my experience with there. I mean, they are elected at large, and they all live in different areas, but they're all not, oh, I want all this for Lincoln and, you know, Enos Park, you get nothing. So... It's, it's a one big ball that you're overseeing. Okay. You've brought up security mm -hmm. a couple times. That's certainly a, a huge concern for me parents um, today. How secure do you feel 186 schools are? Well, the, the couple that I have uh, um, actually physically been in the last you know month or so, I think have some serious concerns. Um, you know, you you hear about uh, the nightmare stories of school shootings, and and you you don't ever want to be um, obviously in that situation. And you have to start thinking along the lines of this is the new reality. Anything can happen in any community. Um, I do know at um, some of the schools they have off-duty Springfield police officers. They have retired police officers. Um, I think it is definitely worth looking into um, partnering with um, um, the Springfield Police Department and see what can be done about having um, uniformed police officers in the schools or um, plainclothes officers um, in the schools. I know there'd be a, co a cost associated with that, I'm sure. Um, but I think at the end of the day, um, the safety of parents or of, of teachers and administrators and students should be the number one concern. You can only do so much um, with, um, you know, building some new um, entrances into the school. But I think having a physical presence, um, knowing that there is a um, officer in the school may change some people's thinkings of, um, what could possibly happen okay. would, would you look at that for all levels or yes yeah, okay. yeah all levels absolutely yeah yes 
Um, bullying is certainly another problem mm-hmm. a lot of parents are, are concerned about. Um, had a recent example on social media after Southeast won the city tournament and the Spirit Award. There were some, uh, let's just say, not kind comments made yep. about Southeast students. Um, how can the district work to reduce bullying? Um, I've heard a lot of a lot of different stories um, within the district of bullying. Um, again, I think a lot of it starts at home. Now, how much you can do with um, what a parent um, does, you know, with their child, um, we could go on and on yeah. <laughs> about um, um, parenting philosophies. Um, but I think, you know, anything they can do to drive the anti-bullying, whether it's different campaigns or, um, you know, I'm actually wearing the wristband today of the, uh, the mayor's youth council. They did the whole wristband thing. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's working with um, the youth in these, especially the high schools. Um, those kids have done a great job with, after that surfaced, um, the Mayor's Youth Council bringing different uh, um, students together from different high schools to come up with the wristbands and to, um, in, in the SJR, you know, the, um, the front page article on it, I think was great. And the positive, um, uh, the positivity that was promoted. I think things like that, um, you know, because at the end of the day, all these kids, they're, they don't know where they come from. They don't know their home life. Um, you know, it, it's just uh, taking it back to basics of treating people like you would like to be treated. Um, I know growing up, the bullying was not like I've seen it anymore. And I think a lot of it has to do with social media. Um, you know, it's so easy. Everything's at your fingertips now. And it's, uh, people don't use their words anymore. They, they text it and type it. And at the end of the day, they need to realize that, you know, there's consequences to these things. And, um, you know, I think it's just promoting harmony within the schools and, um, as, as much, um, you know, bringing in guest speakers to talk about maybe overcoming, um, bullying and adversity in high schools and just getting, um, you know, personal stories out there of how bullying has affected certain people. And, and I think importantly, how they've overcome those, because there are a lot of people that were severely bullied and now they're very successful people. And I'm sure those people like to come in and and tell their stories. So I think it's just making it personal, um, you know, to kids and let them know that, Hey, your words do have consequences. So governing magazine recently published an article around a uh, number of racial inequalities in Midwest cities, and yep. they identified Springfield. Did you get a chance to take a look at that? What was your reaction? I, I did not see that article that you're talking about, um, but I was at a board meeting where um, Ken Page from NAACP and the ACLU came to the board and had talked about that. Um, now, I, I did speak with Jennifer Gill after that um, and having discussions with her. Uh, and, and if I'm elected, I would like to reach out to Ken Page and those individuals and find out how we can work with them um, to address those um, disparities. Um, it was brought up to me um, uh, last week in a meeting, the consent decree um, that has been out there um, that uh, would require the district to um, increase um, hiring of uh, minority teachers. Um, and I can tell you that breakdown, 88% of our teachers in District 186 um, are white and 8.3% are African American. Um, I've asked uh, Jennifer Gill what uh, they are doing to improve uh, that number of 8.3%. And they have a partnership with uh, Central State University. It's in Ohio. It's a predominantly African-American school. Um, And we, uh, I'm not sure who the individual is for District 186, meets with that um, chancellor, I believe, occasionally um, each year and uh, lets them know that, hey, um, you know, there's great opportunities in Springfield. and uh, I believe they're reaching out to other schools as well, other other colleges. Um, so I would definitely support any initiative that, that um, reaches out to local colleges and says, hey, we're looking to hire. Over the years, and the master plan doesn't get into this exactly, but 
there's there's talk as enrollments kind of decline what should we do about the high schools do we need three high schools where any thoughts about that I, i've heard a lot of that too oh, <laughs> yeah oh yeah i've heard a lot of people <laughs> um bring that up and um yeah so it's been brought to my attention um and to be honest with you i've I've only had peripheral discussions. I haven't dug into any figures or anything to know, um, but it has been brought to my attention that you would, um, you know, you would, you could possibly do a junior senior high school, and then you could do a freshman sophomore school, and then you could make the other um, high school into like a trades, uh, a trade school. Um, now that is just some people with their ideas just throwing that around um, but you also the other things you need to look at are um, in springfield it's north end southeast west side so if you do which school would you eliminate you know so then you you know you have those people in that area disenfranchised like well there goes our north end pride or our southeast pride you know um you're you're mixed you're taking kids from from springfield and now you're moving them to southeast and so there's there's a lot of issues with that also there's the athletics um right now with three high schools more kids are um able to participate in athletics um so if you take away one school now there's let's say you know 150 kids that are now left out because there's no opportunities for them to play because there's less teams for them to be on so and these are just the things i've heard i'm not endorsing any of these i it's early in the conversation um and i never even thought of it until i i started running and someone's like hey you should look into the two high school thing and i'm like what <laughs> you know i never thought of it yeah. um yeah. so i have not really done um the math and looked into it um so i know i know it's out there and it's something i would definitely entertain i mean uh, if it makes sense then let's hear about it and and decide there you know okay, okay. thanks um would you recommend any changes to programs or educational offerings that are available either in things you discontinue or things you think we're not doing enough of not that i can think of off the top of my head not not at this time Well, we thank you for meeting with us today, Sean, and invite you to give a brief closing statement as to why voters should choose you on Election Day. Sure. Well, thank you guys again so much for having me, and thank you to the people um, watching the video here um, showing interest in what I have to say today. Um, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm asking for your vote. I'm very passionate um, about District 186. I bring the expertise to the table of dealing with the master plan like we have it at uh, the, the Park District. I've worked for an elected board. I know how it goes. I'll be a strong advocate for teachers. And at the end of the day, I'll be um, fiscally responsible um, overseeing uh, your tax dollars. Um, and most importantly, get out and vote. Um, with these elections, um, these are your neighbors. These are, um, you know, uh, the people that live in your community. They're the ones that it can, you know, can affect your uh, your daily life more than uh, you know probably any other elections um, so it happens right here in your backyard come out make sure you vote support people and I would appreciate their vote for myself so 